Colchester Castle is a Norman castle in Colchester, Essex, dating from the second half of the 11th century. The keep of the castle is mostly intact and is the largest example of its kind anywhere in Europe due to its being built on the foundations of a Roman temple. The castle endured a three-month siege in 1216 but had fallen into disrepair by the 17th century when the curtain walls and some of the keep's upper parts were demolished. Its original height is debated. The remaining structure was used as a prison and was partially restored. The castle has since 1860 housed Colchester Museum, which has an important collection of Roman exhibits. It is a scheduled monument and a grade one listed building. Wow. That's really, really deep. That's very deep. The castle has had various uses since it ceased to be a royal castle. It has been a county prison where in 1645, the self-styled witch-finder general, Matthew Hopkins, interrogated and imprisoned suspected witches. In 1648, during the English Civil War, the royalist leaders, Sir Charles Lucas and Sir George Lille, were executed just to the rear of the castle. Local legend has it that grass would not grow on the spot where they fell. This stone marks the spot where on August 28, 1648, after the surround, surrender of the town, the two royalist captains, Sir Charles Lucas and Sir George Lille were shot by order of Sir Thomas Fairfax, the Parliamentarian General. If you are looking back through the history of the oldest recorded town in the country, you may well find or expect to find tales of tribal wars, civil conflict, invasions, Roman occupation, Anglo-Saxons, Vikings and Normans. That's Colchester. The town itself is a museum. A museum of its own past, with several landmarks and sites that illustrate how significant Colchester was and is. Colchester Castle is undeniably the towering symbol of the town's antiquity. Today, it is a prime tourist attraction with much to see, including collections dating back to the Stone Age. Shows you a little bit of what areas look like, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I've been across the used to be. Yeah. Oh, it's 
follow these arrows. A Roman mosaic. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's so we have cool. a, so we have a better closer look. Yeah. Mm. That's quite cool. Don't bash your head. I know. I hit my head. <laughs> 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 oh, Amazing piece of chain mail. I know. How heavy is that? You're not allowed to touch. Oh no? Okay. Oops. Please do not touch. Mm. Well, they are quite heavy though, mm. but they're made out of chain. Mm. Guys, they're made out of chain. Oh, I like the shield. The shield is pretty cool. Oh, look at this. Are we going the right direction? Uh, no. Oh no, and the arrows do go up here. Oh wow. It's okay, we don't want to get lost. This is what it used to look like. That was in 1935. And this is what it, so this is, this is this, what it looks like now. Yep, this is what it now. And this is what it looks like before. In 1935. Right. And if we go... It's in writing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You can go upwards as well, I think. Yeah. And I think we're already up there. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, look, guys. This campfire was actually right there. Yeah, we can have a little look up there. Yeah? It's, it's really cobwebby, guys. Wow, look at those cobwebs. Must be a gigantic fire over there. That's a lot of cobwebs. Yeah. Oh my god, look at this. Number 17 on there. Yeah. No, it's just finding number 17 on her interactive yeah. tablet. It's another moving round. Yeah, it's one. another 360 view. Whoa. Oh, wow. Look how incredible that looks. Got the door there. Let's have a little look. So we can show everybody at home. Didn't have any roof. I know. But here's the writing. That's the map. Yeah, so on the interactive tablet, this is 18. So we can see a little bit. <laughs> I found number five. What is that? So some daggers. Roman daggers and stuff over there.
the Fenwick treasure is a, u a unique find from Roman Britain. It was found during archaeological excavation in advance of development at the Fenwick store, William and Griffin Cultures High Street in 2014. It was buried in haste under the floor of a Roman house during the Bodicean revolt in AD 60. Several of the jewellery pieces are luxury items, similar in design made in Italy. Yeah, this space is huge, isn't it? Oh, there's something there. That looks okay, incredible, on, on. doesn't it? Yeah, I know. This is what it used to look like. So this is probably one of the chapels. A reminder of the castle's grim past lies in its dungeons. As well as being used to incarcerate prisoners of war in the 16th century, it was employed as the county goal. And it was in its claustrophobic, inhospitable environment that the women accused of witchcraft by Matthew Hopkins, the infamous witchfinder general, were kept before trial for some before execution. The gold calendar from the castle shows the prosecutions of suspected witches began around 1560 and went on for around 150 years. The Matthew Hopkins era lasted from 1645 to 1647. Records indicate that Hopkins, son of a rector and self-appointed witch finder, was paid to hunt down women accused of using supernatural powers to cause mischief and even death within their communities. He would torture them by various means, depriving them of sleep, and they would be tried by water. If they floated when thrown in, they were guilty. The barbaric practice of skin pricking was used no blood drawn being the sign of a witch. And suspects were stripped and checked for extra teats, an indication of familiars, a demon in the form of an animal suckling from them. Hopkins is believed to have rounded up around 230 women, and some men too, including clergymen, although this is thought to be a conservative estimate. Many of his victims came from villages close to Colchester. Hopkins himself lived in Manningtree, as did his first victim, an old woman called Elizabeth Clark. Although torture was illegal at the time, Hopkins' techniques got around this law. Clark confessed her crimes and implicated five others. Hopkins wasn't without his critics. Even at that time, but he played on fear for his own financial gain, whether he truly believed in witchcraft himself or not. During the Matthew Hopkins era, 33 women were held in a small cramped cell for four months with no sanitation. Four women died before their trial. At the inquest, it was said that those who died had received a visitation from God. Which 
churches. Uh, it was also the town jail from 1226 until 1835, so you could throw in there for anything really from stealing a loaf of bread to killing someone. Uh, so you'd have to pay for food and water, you'd have to pay for blankets, and you'd actually have to pay to leave the prison uh, at the end of your time here. Oh. So uh, feel free to have a wander around, you can yep. for a moment at the cell. Okay, yep. So how many people did they hold in the cell at once? Uh, it's rumoured up to 40 people in, in, in Really, the, yeah? I don't think there's really much of a limit. Yeah. Yeah. as many people as they could really. Yeah. There was just no room left. But yeah. Is there any ghost stories or anything about? Um, not many really massive ones. People no? say they might hear yeah. the occasion of a whisper, but nothing, nothing, um, nothing too special. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Are you ready for the prisoners then, Yana? So it's graffiti as well, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah that's something's quite interesting, interesting to look at here is there's these V and W shapes. Apparently those are protection symbols to sort of contain um, oh, wow. witches' powers and wow, and the evil spirits as well. And there's also, if you look very carefully on that door there, you see those um, white scratches at the bottom. If you if you sort of stand at a certain angle, you can see a bit a bit better. But it's a boat, the carving of a boat in the door. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can actually. Yeah, you can oh, see oh, that. Just there. Tell me cells, just a two. Um, I, this was also a cell, and there are. It's sort of like a, a cell, then another one, and another one sort of within the cells. Yeah. But there was um also the women's prison quite a lot later. There was a built above here in the late seventeen hundreds. Wow. So, um, where I'm sitting upstairs. Yeah. You can kind of see them in the wall, it's like a slanting brick level, and that's the old roof. Yeah? Oh my, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's very dark. There's like no facilities or anything like that. There's probably like a bucket in the corner. Yeah. So James Parnell, where, whereabouts was he? Because there's a um, plaque on the ground, isn't there? Yeah, he, as, that, as, you, as you came in, he yeah. was in the cell. Um, that, so there's actually a cell above there, and he used to climb down a rope into that area you saw with the yeah. plaque, and then um, to get food. And then one day he fell off the rope and he broke his leg. A visit to the dungeon today is a stark reminder of the awful conditions and the despair those held must have felt. 
There is graffiti etched on the walls adding to the horror of what they went through. Matthew Hopkins was born around the year 1620. He died on the 12th of August 1647. He was an English witch hunter whose career flourished during the English Civil War. He claimed to hold the office of Witch Finder General, although that title was never bestowed by Parliament. His activities mainly took place in East Anglia. Hopkins' witch finding career began in March 1644 and lasted until his retirement in 1647. He and his associates were responsible for more people being hanged for witchcraft than in the previous 100 years and were solely responsible for the increase of witch trials during those years. He is believed to have been responsible for the executions of over 100 alleged witches between the years 1644 and 1646. Toilets. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the um, old medieval toilets. That's where they used to go to do their their business. Doing that little gap. Yeah, yeah, they used to go down there. Oh, so they used to go down. Go so they used to go underneath that. They used to just fall straight down into the moat. There would have been a moat around the castle, right. so everything. They just sat on that. Just sat on that. And that's just. Go on, you try it out. No. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> <laughs> I think Yana found that funny. It is funny, he's naked. Oh my god, put some clothes on him. Oh, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the kings and the horses and all the king men couldn't put Humpty together again. The nursery rhyme Humpty Dumpty has its origins from a canon recorded as being used at the Church of St Mary at the Wall by the Royalist defenders in the siege of 1648 in Colchester, which at the time was a walled town with a castle and several churches. The story given was that a large cannon called Humpty Dumpty was strategically placed on the wall. A shot from a parliamentary cannon succeeded to damaging the wall beneath Humpty Dumpty which caused the cannon to tumble to the ground. The royalists, or cavaliers, or the king's men, attempted to raise Humpty onto another part of the wall, but the cannon was so heavy that all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again.